Hey everyone, welcome to React course. In this lecture, we will take another example of state attribute of the component class as well as you will understand how to install bootstrap library in your application to glorify your template. We will simply create a clickable button and increase the value of state attribute when we click on the button. I am using the timer component created in the previous lecture. So I just wanted to create a component UI. So I will just create a division tag in the render method. So I will just say here, I will just specify parenthesis and just create a division tag and specify class name. The end should be camo case. And here I will specify app class, right? Now in this division tag, I will just create h5 heading tag and specify text zero. And just after that, I will create a button here and specify text click me right now i just wanted to install bootstrap library in my application bootstrap is a most popular front-end component library which helps you to build responsive mobile first project as well as the library provide us a beautiful ui for the components now to install the bootstrap library you just need to open your terminal i will just say here control tilt you can see i already started my development server so we don't need to execute this command again so I will just leave this as it is and just add another terminal. So I will just click on this add button. So I will just say CLS to clear my screen and just say here. So here you just need to enter into your application. To do that you just need to say CD my app name of your application and press enter right. So now you are in your application directory. Just after that here if you wanted to install any package from the npm you just need to say a command npm install and now i just wanted to include this package in the dependencies also so i will just say here hyphen hyphen save so this will save your package in the dependencies and just specify your package name so i will just say here bootstrap right and just press enter this will install the bootstrap library in your application now your package is installed you can find your package in the node modules folder right so i will just close this window to use bootstrap classes you need to include bootstrap css file in your application to do that i will just go to index.js file and here i will just import so i will just say here double quote and say bootstrap forward slash specify your directory so where you find your bootstrap.css file let me show you just click on the node modules here just find bootstrap package right just enter into bootstrap package and just go to text folder and just click on the css folder now here you just need to include this bootstrap.css file here to do that just specify the absolute path of this bootstrap.css library so here we have a bootstrap folder then i just wanted to specify this folder then i will just say css and then specify bootstrap.css file right so now we had successfully inserted the bootstrap library in the document now you can use bootstrap classes in your project now i will just go to timer component now i will just open my development server so you will get the zero text and this is your button now to change the button ui you just need to specify a class to this button element so i will just say class name is equal to btn btn warning so this is the bootstrap class to specify light yellow color so i will just save this document and this is what you have right so this will just glorify the button just after that now i just want to create a constructor here to the timer class right so i will just say constructor specify parenthesis and the curly braces right so in this example we are initializing state using the constructor so i will just say constructor here don't forget to call this super method so i will just say super and specify parenthesis here now the super method will call the constructor of extended class right so this will call the constructor of component class 
The benefit of creating a constructor is to initialize properties or state before mounting component in the UI. Now, when you create a component constructor, you need to pass property parameter. The constructor for a React component is called before it is mounted. Otherwise, this dot property will be undefined in the constructor, which can be lead to bugs. So I will just create a state here. So I will just set this dot state is equal to unspecify object, right? So I will just specify key and value pair. So the first property I will specify in this object is value and initialize this value with this dot property dot me. I just wanted to create this me property and specify this value to this state value property, right? Now, I will just say here a paragraph. I will just create a paragraph here. And in this paragraph, specify curly braces and say this dot state dot and specify value, right? So here, I just call this value. I will just save this document. And in index.js file, I will just initialize the me property. So I will just say here me is equal to props right and just save this document so when you execute this you will get an error the error says cannot feed property me of undefined so the me property is now undefined if you initialize this property in the constructor so here we created this property in the constructor now here the constructor is called before the react component is mounted that is why you will get undefined value to this me property to solve this problem you need to specify an argument here. So I will just say props. You can specify any name to this parameter and just pass this parameter to the super class. So I will just say props here also, right? Save this document. So you will get props on the console. So you will get props on the document, right? Now you know that the use of this parameter, I will just get rid of this statement and just create another property and value so i will just say here counter and the value is gonna be zero and just after that create another property so i will just say message and the value is gonna be click me right i will just call this property here so you will get click me text so i will just get rid of this click me text and say here this dot state dot message right save this document you will get this output now i just wanted to create click event on this button and when we click on this button i just wanted to increase this value right so i will just create and click event here so i will just say on click is equal to and we are just specifying a function here to call the function you just need to specify a curly braces right so here you can call any JavaScript code in this curly braces. We will understand the events after a few lectures, but just for now on click is just a click event on the button. So we are just embedding this on click event to this button. In this curly braces, I will just call a function. So the function is this dot on click, right? So before we call this function here, I just need to create that first. So here I will just create this function so i will just say on click and specify an arrow function here so i will just say equal to specify parenthesis specify your arrow to call the arrow function and the body right so now this is your valid javascript function now in this function i just need to update these state values when we click on this button so when we click on this button the event will call this function and I just need to update these state values here. So what I will do is I will just call this dot set state method and just specify parenthesis. There are two ways to initialize state in the react component inside the constructor and directly inside the class. In the previous lecture we had learned how to create a state directly inside the class. Now here we just initialize the state property in the constructor, right? So just after that, here we just call set state method. Calling this method will cause React to re-render your application and update the DOM, right? And in this parenthesis, I will just call an object. 
So I will just specify parenthesis here. And the first property is this. I just want to update this counter variable. So I will just say counter. And the counter value is gonna be this dot state dot counter and just say plus one here just after that now i just wanted to update this state property as well so i will just say here message and specify a value so i will just say clicked right so when you click on this button i just wanted to update this text as well as the counter value so i just wanted to specify this counter value here so i will just get rid of this text and specify curly braces and call this dot state dot counter property right and just save my document so when you click on this button i just wanted to update this value so i will just click here and when you click on this button this text will update to clicked right so i'll just click here right so this text is updated to clicked and the value you will get is one i will just click on this button again you will get two click again you will get three and you can click on this button and increase the value of the state property right as simple as that so i will just right click here and say inspect and just go to body section of this document and just click on this div this app division tag and this is the h5 state property right i just want to update this property here so i will just click here and you will see only this element is updating not the complete dom so i will just click here right so when i click on this button you will see this h5 element is updating not anything else i will just click here again right so you can see this element is updating when we click on this button so this is the benefit of virtual dome that's it now you have learned two ways to create a state property of a component class right if you have any question you can ask me in the comment answering the question specified in the comment will definitely help you to improve your knowledge that is all for now. We will see you in the next lecture.